Well, our position is what uh, we have always said. Rwanda is uh, deeply concerned about uh, the conflict that is taking place across the border. This is the reason we, uh, our armed forces are deployed heavily along the border to ensure that Rwandans are protected. And there's always a danger of uh, spillover uh, when these uh, groups clash across the border, that's that's why we're vigilant um, and alert, and we have mechanisms uh, at the border to ensure that uh, Rwandans and those who live here are protected. Uh, we're also concerned that uh, what is going on in, in the DRC with the DRC government, uh, not only supporting, uh, giving material, moral and political cover to uh, illegal armed groups, including the genocidal militia FDLR, is, is a danger to the population in the DRC and it's a threat to our security in Rwanda and it is a violation of the ongoing uh, peace arrangements, uh, the Luanda and Nairobi protocols. The DRC government has failed to, to do its part to uphold these agreements that they signed up to and as a result uh, the conflict is uh, prolonged and uh, it puts people's lives in danger and it continues uh, uh, the instability in this region that nobody wants. It's unnecessary um, and um, our call is for everyone to to commit to, to what was agreed in uh, with Nairobi and Luanda protocol so we can move towards peace and stability. Well, first of all, this is, this is a DRC problem. So they have to sort themselves out. The region has come together. together. The leaders of this, regions are, of this region are are, are, are working hard, um, mostly committed to uh, ensuring that peace is restored to that part of, of DRC. So it's a, it's a DRC problem. Uh, where we come in as Rwanda is uh, nothing should uh, threaten our te territorial integrity. We do not want any spillover uh, of the conflict in DRC into Rwanda. And we have put in place measures to, uh, to, to ensure that it doesn't sp uh, spill over. We're grateful that uh, we did not have any casualties uh, with the incident that happened yesterday when two of these illegal armed groups that are supported by the DRC government clashed among themselves. Um, I don't know for what reason, but uh, we saw the consequences because it's right at our border. And this is what we constantly uh, tell um, the region and the international community that uh, what is happening in the DRC, uh, in Eastern DRC, um, is, a, is a threat to our security because it's close to our border. We want peace, uh, we want continued development here in Rwanda and in the region, and this kind of activity um, threatens that. There was one injury yesterday from the stray bullet from the clashes uh, across the border, um, and uh, the, the man who was injured is being treated um, at the health center in, uh, in Rubavu district. And one of the things that I said on the panel today is that what is not said about this situation is as important as what is said. Uh, there, there are um, situations that are not being talked about, that are important, that affect the lives of civilians, uh, both uh, in the DRC and uh, also indirectly in Rwanda. Uh, these have to be talked about as well. I'm talking specifically about the proliferation of of hate speech that is followed by um, attacks on people. We've, we've seen that people have, have been attacked, um, people have died, uh, homes have been burnt, uh, property has been destroyed, uh, all as a result of uh, the hateful rhetoric that is, uh, um, is propagated at the highest level of government, including by the security organs in the DRC. The, um, the Special Envoy on Prevention of Genocide at the UN, Alice Nderitu, issued two statements about this. Uh, this is something that the, the UN itself needs to take seriously because it's coming from within. Um, these uh, statements that she put out warning about the proliferation of hate speech and warning about the attacks on, on these targeted communities in the DRC were basically ignored by the mainstream media. Uh, they are not taken into consideration by other parts of the UN system. Um, but this information has to be used to ensure the protection of all civilians, not just some. It has a direct consequence on us in Rwanda because when uh, Congolese citizens are uh, are persecuted in DRC, they flee to Rwanda for protection. So they're here. Uh, they continue to come every every week. Uh, since November last year, we've had almost 15,000 new refugees from DRC. So there's, there's a direct link uh, between what's happening.
uh, in the DRC and, and, the, and what happens here in, the terms of, in terms of refugees that seek shelter and safety in Rwanda and cannot go back to their homes because, uh, because uh, for safety reasons and because they're persecuted. And all um, well, the, the, the rhetoric is there. Uh, this is why we, uh, Rwanda ensures that our borders are, protect, are protected. This is what our armed forces, uh, uh, this, is, this is their job and they're doing their job. They're at the border. We've said this very openly and we will not hesitate to protect, uh, to defend our borders and pr to protect our people. We've said this very clearly.